To solve two-step equations, we undo the order of operations. You're going to see in the next slide how we're going to build an equation that we could solve by using the order of operations. Remember, the last two steps of the order of operations are multiplication and or division from left to right. And the second step is, or the last step is, addition and or subtraction from left to right as it appears in the expression. How to solve two-step equations by undoing that order of operations is that we do that order of operations in reverse and we undo it using the properties of equality that you should have learned about prior to this lesson. The first step is to undo any addition or subtraction and the second step is to undo any multiplication or division that appears in the equation. We're going to see in the next slide we're going to use the order of operations to build an equation that we can solve. Example 3 we're still solving two-step equations and in these two-step equations we really have a lot of fractions and these problems in my experience cause students a lot of grief a lot of anxiety because they're not sure what to do with fractions. Even when we have simple fractions, like in example A, where we have all the same denominator, students tend to get freaked out. Pay attention. If you watch my previous videos on solving one-step equations, you should be pretty comfortable with fractions. Example A is 4 fifths times x plus 7 and 1 fifth is equal to 2 fifths. As I mentioned earlier, these all have common denominators. That's going to make the addition or subtraction very easy. And in this problem, in this equation on the left-hand side, where the variable is located, we have add 7 and 1 fifth. Well, to solve that equation, we're going to need to subtract 7 and 1 fifth from both sides. Now, this isn't the hard part. This isn't the hard part. The hard part, really, is going to be on the right-hand side of the equation, where we're going to actually have to do 7 take away, or two-fifths take away seven and one-fifth. On the left-hand side, these simply divide out. They cancel. On left, so that leaves us on the left-hand side four-fifths x. And on the right-hand side, we're going to have to do some math. So we're subtracting two-fifths and 7 and 1 fifth. To do that, since we're a positive take away a bigger positive, we're actually going to need to do 7 and 1 fifth minus 2 fifths. So when we subtract this, um, we can't go 1 fifth take away 2 fifths, so we borrow from the 7. It becomes 6. The 1 fifth, we're going to add 5 fifths to it, and it's going to give us 6 fifths. So we have to go 6 fifths take away 2 fifths, which is going to give us 4 fifths. And then the whole number 6, 6 take away no other whole number is going to leave us 6. Since the take away 7 and 1 fifth is, has a larger absolute value, the solution or answer to that is a negative. So it's negative for 6 and 4 fifths. Next, we're going to have to get rid of this fractional coefficient. In my video on solving one-step equation of multiplication and division, I taught to get rid of this fractional coefficient, we could multiply each side by the reciprocal. And multiplying each side by the reciprocal, in this case, looks the reciprocal of 4 fifths is going to be 5 over 4. So multiplying 5 over 4 on both sides the left hand side, the fives and the fours all divide out. Or they can multiply to give 20 over 20, which would give 1. In essence, they divide out or they cancel, leaving us x on the left hand side, bringing the equal sign down. We have to complete this multiplication, but to complete this multiplication, we first have to change this mixed number, negative 6 and 4 fifths, into an improper fraction do that by taking the denominator, multiplying it by the whole number, and that gives us 30. 5 times 6 is 30. And then 30 plus 4 gives us our new numerator, 34, but the denominator remains 5, and 
this number is negative because it started off as a negative. Now I can multiply that by the reciprocal 5 over 4. When I do that, I can cancel or divide the 5s by 5 because that's the greatest common factor. And that leaves me 1 in both places. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 5 divided by 5 is 1. Here we have 34 and 4. They're both even, so they're divisible by 2. 34 divided by 2 is 17. 17, or 4 divided by 2, is equal to 2. So I multiply what I have left. In the numerators, I have 17 times 1, which leaves 17, or gives 17. And then the denominators, I have 1 times 2. A negative times a positive is negative. Thus, x is equal to negative 17 halves. We could also express that answer as negative 8 and 1 half, or negative 8.5. That would be converting this mixed number, or this improper fraction, into a mixed number. Sorry, I said that backwards. In example B, it's a similar example. Uh, still pretty easy. Two of the denominators are the same. In example B, we have 2 thirds times x plus 4 and 5 6 is equal to 2 6. In this example, the x is on the left hand side. That is to say, the variable is. So we first need to get rid of the, or undo the addition. In this case, we'll have to subtract 4 and 5 6 from each side. On the left hand side, these two become 0, or they cancel, leaving 2 thirds x. Bring down the equal sign, and on this side, to get this number, we have to complete the subtraction. It's similar to what we did over here, where we have a positive taking away a bigger positive. We actually need to subtract 2, 6 from 5, 6. When we subtract this, we don't have to borrow it this time because this numerator is greater than this numerator. So 5 take away 2 is 3. The denominators are 6, or is 6. 4 take away no whole numbers, 4. Now 3, 6, the 3, 6 can reduce to 4 and 1 half. So the number here is 4 and 1 half. Moving on, to get rid of this fractional coefficient, you need to be able to multiply both sides by 3 halves, or the reciprocal. The threes cancel each other. The twos cancel each other, leaving the x isolated now, which is our goal. On this side, remember, we have to change this mixed number into an improper fraction before we multiply. 2 times 4 is 8, and 8 plus 1 is 9. So that would be 9 halves. When I go to multiply, I cannot cross cancel anywhere. So 9 times 3 is 7. 9 times 3 is 27. And 2 times 2 is 4. And I'm just noticing I forgot here because 2, 6 take away 4 and 5, 6 because we had to switch that or we're taking a positive away from a smaller positive. This number here should have been negative. Thus, 9 halves should have been negative, which leaves us a negative times a positive, and our final answer should be a negative. So our final answer here can be x is equal to negative 27 over 4. Or if we converted this improper fraction into a mixed number, that would be negative 6 and 3 fourths, or a negative 6.75. 
be ready to do some problems on your own, solving with fractional coefficients and mixed numbers. Action. Example three, your turn, solving two-step equations. What you should do now is pause the video and time yourself. When you're done, continue the video to get the solutions to the work. Welcome back. Hopefully, your work matches my work. Let me show you how I'd solve these problems. In problem A, we have 2 sevenths x plus 4 and 9 fourteenths is equal to 11 over 14. On the left of the equal sign is our variable, and it's being multiplied by 2 sevenths, and we are adding 4 and 9 fourteenths to it. To solve this equation, we're first going to have to undo the addition we're going to be subtracting 4 and 9 fourteenths from both sides. On the left hand side, these numbers cancel because they are opposites. That leaves us with 2 over 7x. On this side, since we have 11 fourteenths take away 4 and 9 fourteenths, since this is a smaller number, then this, 11 fourteenths is less than 4 and 9 fourteenths. We're subtracting 4 and 9 fourteenths from 11 fourteenths. Our answer is going to be negative. To complete this calculation by hand, you'd write down 4 and 9 fourteenths minus 11 fourteenths, subtracting the absolute values, if you will. To do this, we have to subtract the fractions, the parts first. 9 fourteenths take away 11 fourteenths. To complete this calculation, we need to borrow from the 4. It becomes 3. 9 over 14, we're going to add that 1 to it, but we're going to express it as 14 over 14. And that's going to be equal to 23 over 14. Now we have to subtract 23 over 14 and then 11 over 14. 23, take away 11, is 12. The denominator remains the same, and the whole number 3, take away nothing, is 3. Before I take this and put this down here, I'm going to reduce this fraction. 12 over 14 can be reduced by a factor of 2. So 3 and 12 fourteenths can be rewritten as 3 and 6 sevenths. So when I put that down here, I have a negative 3 and 6 sevenths. Now to solve this, I have 2 sevenths times x. I need to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 2 sevenths, which is 7 over 2. On the left, the sevens and the twos divide out their common factors, leaving us with the variable now isolated, the x's by itself. And to complete this math, this calculation, we first have to change negative three and six sevens into a improper fraction. So I'll do that down here. To change this to an improper fraction, you go seven times three to give 21, and 21 plus six to give 27. So that's 27 over 7. And it is actually negative. Put that negative there. We have to multiply this by 7 over 2. Before we multiply, we should look to cross divide or cross cancel. Well, the 7s can divide by a factor of 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1. And 7 divided by 7 is 1. So these sevens divide out, 27 and 2 do not, so we can just multiply. 27 times 1 is 27, and 1 times 2 is 2, and a positive times a negative is negative. So the solution here is negative 27 over 2. You could also have negative 13.5 or negative 13 and 1 half. Solving problem B, we have 2 thirds x plus 
2 and 4 ninths is equal to 12. We first, in this problem, notice that the variable is on the left-hand side, and that it's being multiplied by 2 thirds, and we are adding 2 and 4 ninths to it. So we're going to have to subtract 2 and 4 ninths from both sides. These are opposites, so they cancel, and that leaves us 2 thirds x on the left-hand side. On this side, to complete this calculation, the answer first off is going to be positive because you can in fact take 2 and 4 ninths away from 12. But to do this, we're going to need to put a fraction here. Nothing take away 4 ninths is not 4 ninths. We need to put a fraction there. So we're going to borrow 1 from 12 to give us 11. And the fraction we're going to put here is 9 over 9 because we have 11 and 1, which gives us 12. We're just writing it as 11 and 9 ninths, so now we can subtract. 9 take away 4 to give us 5, and the denominator stays 9, and 11 take away 2 is 9. So we have 2 thirds x is equal to 9 and 5 ninths. So we continue to solve this problem. We get rid of this fractional coefficient by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal of 2 thirds, which is 3 halves. When we multiply this on the left hand side, 3 halves times 2 thirds is 1. And since the variable is there, that's 1x. And on this side, before I get my final answer, remember we have to change a mixed number to an improper fraction. 9 times 9 is 81. 81 plus 5 is 86. That would be 86 over 9 because the denominator remains the same. We need to multiply that by 3 halves. As I've done before, I'm going to look for common factors. 3 and 9 have a common factor of 3. So I can divide them both by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And 86 and 2 have a common factor of 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And 86 divided by 2 is 43. So our final answer here would be x is equal to 43 thirds, 43 over 3. We could also express that as 14 and a third, or as a decimal, that would be 14.3. So you may have one of those answers also. Remember, when you're solving two-step equations, you have to undo the addition or subtraction first, and then undo the multiplication or, or division. As in these examples, we had to get rid of a fractional coefficient, so I multiplied by the inverse of that fractional coefficient to get rid of it.